from the Coin Center in downtown Portland. This is Coin 6 News. Watching out for you. Welcome in to Coin 6 News at 6. Thanks for joining us this Christmas. I'm Andrew Dimbert in for Chris Holmstrom tonight. Well, our first story, people across our area coming together in separate acts of kindness to help others for the holiday. Coin 6's Jennifer Dowling has a wrap of those who chose to give this holiday weekend. Jennifer, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Andrew. Well, we had a family burned out of their home in Corbett and people under the bridge receiving gloves in Portland, along with cops in Beaverton hitting the beat, acting as Santa's elves. All of this giving made for a great holiday. Just went up like a matchstick. He didn't even have shoes on his feet. When Caroline and Harley Lisi's home burned down on December 11th, they never imagined the community of Corbett would come together to replace their Christmas gifts, especially since they'd only been living at their home for about three months. Yeah, hi. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. But last night, Holly McCowan brought the gifts over to the couple's daughter's house. So many people had so many things to offer. The Lisi's overcome with emotion. For everyone to help. It's just, I, I'm overly thankful. Thank you guys, and thank you for all your support that's coming, and all the support and that dry storage, all of you, and I will definitely be paying it forward. Yeah. I will. We you thank will. you very much. Thank very, you. Very, very much. And the Portland Houseless Support Coalition wrapped up their Christmas Eve donation drive in conjunction with Right to Dream 2. Advocates walked to the east side to pass out warm clothing for those who were forced to spend Christmas outside. The needs are greater. Needs are increasing. Houselessness is increasing. Uh, there are greater numbers of people on the street. Uh, we're coming back to the to R2D2 empty handed tonight, which is not always the case on Under the Bridges Walk. To help Santa out, the Beaverton police pose as elves in blue. So Santa is stuck on the other side of the world right now. Taking presents to kids who might not otherwise get them for the holiday. I love dropping it off to the little kids because you get to experience the Christmas magic. Normally during Christmas we might I just sit in and sleep and it's, it's a real nice change. Say thank you. Thank you. Some cute little ones there. So if you'd like to help with some of these donation efforts or the warm clothes drive, we're going to put some of this information later on in the day on coin.com so you can check that out. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, it only happens in the movies. Well, how about the movie theaters? A man wakes up in an empty theater in the middle of the night out in Cornelius. Justin Haworth went out to see Star Wars Rogue One. Sometime during the movie, he fell asleep. Now, when he woke up hours later, he was all alone. That's when he tried getting out, tripping a motion sensor alarm. I wake up, com theater's completely dark. I can't see nothing. I can, I, like, I can see the screen and like maybe my hand in front of my face if I waved it. I called up the, uh, I called up, I, I just called 911 at that point because no other option. And uh, I ended up getting a hold of them and, and I told them, it's like, it's not an emergency. I'm just, I'm stuck in the movie theater here in Cornelius. Officers say it wasn't crime related and that theater staff just forgot to check the entire theater. All right, Joseph Dames is now with us in the Weather Center. Joseph, Merry Christmas to you as well. Hey, Merry Christmas, uh, Andrew, and everyone at home. I hope you had a wonderful day so far. Nice afternoon, high pressure in charge, a lot of sunshine. And you know what? It's pretty quiet still as we head into our evening. It's 37 degrees, still a little bit of clouds out there. We might have some low-level fog as we head into this evening. Southeast breeze, again, 7 miles per hour. I hope you've had a wonderful day so far. Again, uh, Merry Christmas to everyone there at home. Here's what we have going now. We have a big system off to the northwest, which is going to affect us, bring in some impact uh, by the time we get into our Monday afternoon for now. A little really weak disturbance, kind of this leading edge of cloud coverage moving in, some precipitation off the coast right now, but closer towards home here in Portland, Battleground, Forest Grove, uh, we're on the dry side. Temperatures cooling down to about the lower 30s as we head into this evening. Now I'm tracking some snow. It could affect uh, the gorge, the mountains, and even us here in the valley. I'll let you know about that. My full forecast coming up in just a couple minutes. Andrew? All right. Thank you, Joseph. Well, caught on camera, a tense situation inside a Washington mall when a man pulls out a knife on last-minute Christmas shoppers. According to Linwood Police, the victim in his 30s stepped in between two other men in their late teens fighting. Now, one of those teens stabbed the man. Then both teens tried to run, but were immediately taken down by mall security and bystanders. I see a guy reaching in his waistband, and everyone was just screaming. And I thought he was going to pull out a gun at first. Now, fortunately, that victim is okay. 
And we now know the identity of the elderly woman who died yesterday after rear-ending a TriMet bus in northeast Portland. She is 88-year-old Jean Lincoln. Her son was also in the car but only had minor injuries. Investigators believe she may have applied the gas instead of the brakes before crashing into the back of the stopped TriMet bus. Lincoln's death is the 42nd traffic fatality in the city of Portland in 2016. Well, sadly, the 43rd fatality wasn't far behind. A Christmas tragedy overnight. A 16-year-old is dead and three other teens are in the hospital after a crash on Mount Scott Boulevard. The teens were traveling from Happy Valley after an evening of singing Christmas carols with members of a Southeast Portland church. It looks as though the car missed a sharp turn, sending them off the roadway. And another man is dead in a crash on Highway 30 near Astoria. Investigators say two cars got into a minor crash because of icy roads. And when the drivers got out to survey that damage, a third car lost control, killing one of those drivers. OSP is investigating the accident. And now on to another wreck. A car slams into the side of a Dairy Queen in Salem. Crews helped the driver who was trapped inside the car. He's recovering in the hospital tonight. A magnitude 7.6 earthquake hit Chile's southern coast and causes some damage. Now, fortunately, though, no deaths have been reported, and the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center says the tsunami threat has ended. A tragedy in Russia this Christmas Day. A Russian military jet carrying 92 people crashed into the Black Sea just after takeoff. No survivors have been found. CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette reports. Search teams scoured the Black Sea Sunday, looking for debris and victims after a plane operated by the Russian military crashed two minutes after takeoff Sunday morning. The Soviet-built plane belonged to the defense ministry. Its flight had originated in Moscow and refueled in the southern Russian city of Sochi before taking off for Syria. All 84 passengers and eight crew members on board are feared dead. The passengers included 64 members of the Alexandrov Ensemble. The official choir of the Russian military, which has given performances around the world. The choir was scheduled to perform for Russian troops in Syria on New Year's Eve. Outside the group's headquarters in Moscow, mourners left flowers in tribute. Search teams found parts of the plane about a mile from shore. They have also recovered a number of bodies. Their work will continue around the clock. Russia's transport minister says investigators are looking into all possible causes of the crash, including terrorism. The plane took off in good weather. Russian President and Vladimir Putin expressed his condolences to families of the victims and called for a national day of mourning on Monday. Wendy Gillette for CBS News. Nine Russian journalists and a well-known Russian humanitarian and doctor were also on board the plane. Well, still to come on Coin 6 News at 6, families get help this Christmas from a not-so-secret Santa. And speaking of surprises, some lucky service members make it home for the holidays. We'll take a look at some of this season's best homecomings. And hey, what a way to wrap up our weekend. Merry Christmas to everyone. I'm tracking some snowfall to start off your new work week or new week. I'll tell you about it coming up in just a couple minutes. See you there. No, no, it's cool. I was literally getting a cookie. <laughs>
Well, there are lots of smiles today on Christmas for hundreds of Portland area families, thanks to generous donations from the community. Our very own Jeff Gianola met up with one mom who is fortunate enough to give her kids a real Santa style holiday, thanks to a special nonprofit. Yeah. Of Meet Teresa Miniweather. This is Matthew Christopher. Baby Matthew is the youngest. And I have two boys, two girls, so ages 14 to 8 months. Um, so with them running around trying to take care of them, so working and trying to take care of them is a handful. They're here at the Fred Meyer in Oregon City doing what every busy family does this time of year, Christmas shop. She didn't know quite how she was going to get everything on her list this year until her family was adopted by a group of total strangers. I'm very happy and blessed that they were willing to come out and pick me <laughs> so we can get the gifts that they actually want this year. Those strangers are part of the Christmas Family Adoption Foundation. People come out of the woods and they contact us and say, I want to adopt that family. And they adopt them, they do all of the shopping, all of the wrapping, and usually deliver all of the gifts to the family. Mike Burwright is the president. Started in 2002 with one family. And uh, when. 14 years later? Yes, 14 years later, we've gone from one to 665 this year. Teresa and her children, just one of hundreds of families who needed a little extra help this year. Feeling grateful to live in a community with such generous people. Because I was actually telling my kids this year, you know, Christmas is going to be a little bit different. So, you know, you might not get everything that you want on your, you know, Christmas list. So this year is going to be a big surprise. Jeff Gianola, Coin 6 News. The holidays can be especially rough on families who have loved ones serving overseas. But every year, a few lucky soldiers get to surprise their families with an unexpected homecoming. Jim Axelrod reports. Congrats on the win. Go on. When Army Lieutenant Bo Farrell wished Notre Dame's basketball team well Monday, a good night became great for his brother Matt, the starting point guard. Grateful to see Bo safe from where Matt thought was Afghanistan. I love you and I miss you very much. For us, but when it turned out Bo was actually in South Bend, great became a moment these brothers will remember forever. Same thing at Widewater Elementary School in Virginia last week. <laughs> Jackson Rescott had an Xbox at the top of his wish list. I think I have a bit of Christmas magic for you. But Santa had a better idea. Marine Staff Sergeant David Rescott, deployed overseas the last eight and a half months, left his son's jaw hanging open until he reached for a hug. For the last couple of weeks, Tis been the season for a battalion of military moms and dads, sons and daughters, to pull off the kind of surprise attack. And is that why you haven't called me back? No one minds being the target of. Just this week, a couple of daughters recording the mannequin challenge at their school in Oklahoma had a surprise waiting at the end of the line seeing their dad for the first time in a year. Specialist Christine Rainey surprised her 10-year-old Kayla in South Carolina. And Air Force Master Sergeant John Lang shocked his 20-year-old daughter, a hockey nut whose first Chicago Blackhawks game ever Hi, Kim Madison. That's dad. was bittersweet since her dad wasn't there to share it. Until he was. Another holiday antidote to all that news that's left us asking what's wrong with the world by showing us what's right. Jim Axelrod, CBS News, New York. 
Okay, Joseph Dames is joining us again with a look at our forecast. It was a beautiful day today. It's oh, man. Christmas. It was so nice. We had a little bit of fog this morning, but sunshine by the afternoon. It's howled through the whole day, and uh, it's going to be a pretty nice finish, too. So I hope everyone's kind of staying indoors, enjoying their time, enjoying their, uh, their Christmas, and just kind of enjoying it. Uh, here's what we have going on, though. We have some changes that are going on. We can thank that nice sunny weather to that high pressure that's just off to our east now, kind of clearing things out, and off to the northwest is our next system. Already pushing a little bit of cloud coverage in. So uh, probably a pretty nice sunset for a lot of people. Now I'll keep my eye on this area of low pressure off to the northwest. It's going to be our system for our Monday. So for the meantime, things are OK here and all right uh, across the Pacific Northwest. Just a few showers that might make their way into the coast. But east of that, uh, things are on the dry end. I want to take you over towards the Midwest because we have this big powder keg of a system. Look at this, bringing in some strong storms. Our coin six Cole Miller's in Nebraska, and he was dealing with a little bit of some uh, thunderstorms today for Christmas. Behind it, though, the snow. So really big system that's kind of uh, traversing through the center of the United States right now. But closer towards home, just a nice day. How about it? Our Sunday was very uh, comfortable. We had some sunshine. Here's a shot of Western Oregon University this morning. Started off with some fog, beautiful sunset, and now uh, very festive at this time of the year with this big tree kind of hanging out right there. So 37 degrees are our current temperatures, 39 for uh, Vancouver, 38 for Astoria. So the upper 30s, a little bit cooler to the south, Salem at 33, Eugene 34. And through the gorge, upper 20s. How about Burns, though? Look at that. Sub-zero temperatures at negative one right now at this time. Overnight low forecast temperatures are going to stay pretty cold. I expect those single digits are below zero temperatures off to the east. The model actually isn't doing a very good job trying to pick up on that extreme cold. It's going to be very cold off that in that direction and along the coast uh, 40s and 30s through the valley. Here's what we have going on. Here's six o'clock. The clouds are here. We'll keep a, a, a spotty shot for some rain along the coast. Uh, that's about it. We'll stay dry for the most part. Uh, we get into our Monday morning. I expect some sunshine, maybe some low level clouds, but uh, along the coast, you'll probably be cloudier than the rest of us. By the time we get into the afternoon, here comes that rain. I think it's going to start close to 3 p.m., 4 p.m., right around that time. And then uh, we could even see a little bit snow up in Washington. So we'll have to watch this front edge behind it mainly just rain for the coast and we can see a decent amount. There's a, some deep moisture with this system and it's going to bring in a lot of snow for the Cascades and parts of the gorge as we go through our Monday evening, overnight Monday into Tuesday, and then some spotty showers and uh, keeping the rain in the forecast and snow in the forecast through our Tuesday. So the next couple of days, I'm expecting things to be wet and a little tricky on the roads. I'll take you out to some winter weather advisories and a winter storm watch. Matter of fact, uh, through the gorge, expecting two to four inches. Again, that's from about Troutdale, stretching eastward towards Hood River. Uh, that's the spot we'll have to watch for our Monday night into Tuesday morning. Winter storm watch through the Cascades where they could pick up another 12 to 24 inches of snowfall. I expect this to uh, probably be uh, lifted into a winter storm warning possibly. And then a winter storm watch in areas north uh, of Pendleton and east of Pendleton, another 8 to 13 inches. So that's what I'm tracking, the winter storm timing. Uh, it's going to be for our Tuesday afternoon is when it's going to wrap up Monday night to Tuesday afternoon. The Gorge, I-84, Cascades, 26 and 20 we'll have to watch. Beyond that, it looks like we're going to become pretty mild. 45 degrees on Thursday, 43 on Friday, and it looks like we'll wrap up the year at 40 degrees. So the Gorge looking like they're going to get some more More snow, snow yeah. yeah. It is winter. Yeah. All right, thank you, Joseph. Well, still to come after the break, Christmas messages from some of the leaders around the world. You're watching Coin 6 News, watching out for you.
It's Christmas Day for millions of Christians around the world. The Pope delivered his traditional Christmas Day message, making a passionate plea for peace in war-torn areas around the world. He told Israelis and Palestinians to abandon hate and revenge, and for Iraq, Libya, and Yemen to end their brutal wars. Pope Francis also called for peace in Nigeria and South Sudan, and that Colombia and Venezuela should stay on a course of reconciliation. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge attended a Christmas Day church service at St. Mark's Church in Berkshire. A heavy cold kept Queen Elizabeth from attending the traditional Christmas morning service. Now, it's incredibly rare for the Queen to miss this because it's considered a cornerstone of the royal family's Christmas celebrations. It also brings the monarch into contact with local residents who gather outside for a glimpse at royalty. And back in the U.S., the president and the first lady wished all Americans a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. We've been able to welcome over One of the best parts of the holiday season is spending time with the special people in your life. And for me, that means getting some help from my best friend for our annual Christmas weekly address. Now, given how our first Christmas weekly address went, I realized that Barack needed all the help he could get. <laughs> This is our first Christmas in the White House, and we what? Stop! What? You know what? You got to stop it. All right, you got to get it together. You're gonna have to pull it together, POTUS. They reflected on the honor of serving the American people as president and first lady over the past eight years, and the progress that's been made. Now, the president and the first lady recognized our troops and their families for their service, and they're encouraging everyone to visit joiningforces.gov to find out how to support military families in your community. All right, seven-day forecast. Um
sunshine as we go forward, <laughs> but we'll come to camera real fast because I really wanted to show this tie that I got. I'll, I'll do it after this. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> We're on a different board. Got this awesome Christmas tie. Lights up. Just can't wear it because it's green. So I went with the all black. Oh, you mean because of the green screen? Green right? screen. <laughs> so this would have all keyed out. But if you could see it, it's so cool. Look at this. Santa. Well, all right. Now, where so, do you get a tie like that? You get a tie from a family member like that. So. You know, it's funny. I actually have a suit that's all just uh, the snowmen on it. And I, you know, I, I was going to consider wearing it today, Should but it doesn't matter there. because I ordered it online and it didn't ever came in. So, but it's just a bunch of snowmen. It's pretty ridiculous. Good stuff. I should have just got the tie though. You you know, I, could, I don't have to stand in front of a green hey, screen. Hey, we so. have snow for our Monday evening for the mountains. Be careful on the roads. All right, it's going to do it for us. Merry Christmas, everybody.